Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 Season 24 video on the best builds. In this video, we're going to take a look at the top 10 best builds that you can play in Season 24 for solo Greater Rift pushing. And we're going to group about 50 of the top builds in this game into a tier list of their relative power. As last time, this video is brought to you in collaboration with the fine folks over at MaxRoll.gg. We're a think tank of some of the top Diablo 3 players, who you'll be seeing on the leaderboards, combine their brain power, play experience, and the power of math to figure out what the best builds of Season 24 will be. So, let's move into the tier list itself and put up the Season 23 tier list to compare what has changed. As a refresher, our tiers are measured in terms of relative power compared to S-tier builds, which are the best builds in the game. The S-tier builds are the ones expected to be topping the leaderboards by the end of the season. And we should note here that there are some builds that perform exceptionally well at the start of the season, but these builds are not necessarily the best builds. They're just easy to put together, but will eventually reach a cap that will be exceeded by other builds. In other words, the builds topping the leaderboards at the start of a season, one or two weeks in, may not be the same topping the leaderboards at the end of a season. So going back to our tier definition, you can expect B tier builds, for instance, to be reaching an average of 10 Greater Rift levels lower than S tier. And as a perhaps oversimplified extrapolation, if you are topping out at GR100 with a C tier build, then you can expect to top out at a GR110 with an A tier build. Now, as we move into our comparison from the Season 23 to Season 24 tier list, we'll note that the main reason for most of the movement on this list is the introduction of Ethereals this season. Ethereals are new, powerful, Season 24 exclusive weapons that will be the best in slot weapons for most builds. Some builds benefit tremendously from Ethereals, others benefit only slightly. And for a small number of builds, there's just no way to work an Ethereal in that results in an upgrade to the build. On average, Ethereals increase the build's power by about 5 Greater Rifts. So on average, relative to Season 23, Season 24 builds are all 5 Greater Rifts higher than before. As a reminder, on the tier list, a red arrow means a build has dropped a tier, a green arrow means a build has risen a tier, two arrows means two tiers, and a star indicates a new build, and the little sack there indicates that the build uses a set that is part of the season's Hadrig's gift. So let's dive into the season 24 tier list, starting with the F tier. F is in for the lols, because that's the only reason we're keeping the Arakir Chicken Doctor on this tier list. Arakir Chicken is a hilarious speed build that has you running around as a chicken and exploding, but it can't benefit from any ethereals and technically should probably be bumped off the tier list altogether. So that takes us to the D tier. D as in... Don't think anyone will run these builds this season. These builds are up to 20 Great Rifts behind S tier builds. We have here the Monk's Raiment Generator build, which has to use the two-piece Shenlong set meaning there's just no room for an ethereal in this build because the Shenlong set is more powerful than an individual ethereal, so it drops a tier because it's not keeping up with the average ethereal power buff that every build in general gets. N6M4 Demon Hunter is forced to use the Doomslinger ethereal, which isn't well suited for the build, but it's the only ethereal it can work in, and that comes out to only a marginal increase in power below the average power increase, so it drops as well from C to D tier. Then the Natalia Fan of Knives build also uses the Doomslinger, but it benefits more greatly from it than the N6M4 build, allowing it to remain in D tier. We have the Helltooth Witch Doctor, which works in the Gidbin Ethereal, and we have the LOD Necromancer Mage build, which works in the Soul Harvest Ethereal, and that's enough to keep up with the average power rise, so those stay there. We got the Wizard's Legacy of Dreams Meteor build that benefits tremendously from the Wizard Spike Ethereal, but it was scraping the bottom of D tier previously and doesn't quite manage to escape, despite the big ethereal buff. Then we have the Tragul Lancer. Tragul's is the starter set for Necromancers in Season 24. The Tragul Corpse Lance build is able to work in the powerful Black Bog's Sharp Ethereal, which allows it to rise from F tier to D tier. And that takes us to the C tier. C as in... Can't believe there are so few builds left. <laughs> in the tier. C tier builds are up to 15 GRs behind S tier, and this is where we can find the Shadow Impale Demon Hunter, who drops from B tier because there's no ethereal that this build can even use. And the IK Charge Barb, 
which simply cannot fit an ethereal into the build while maintaining the necessary six pieces of Immortal Kings and four pieces of Raycor set bonuses. Then we have the Akan Condemned Crusader, who's working in Astrion's Iron Ward, and the Tal Rasha Frozen Orb Wizard, that's working in the Wizard Spike. And that allows both of these builds to keep up with the average power increase. The Pestilence Corpse Lance Necromancer works in the powerful Black Box Sharp Ethereal, rising from D tier. And the Marauder Cluster Bombs build works in the powerful Bereza. But it was just scraping the bottom of C tier last season and is now at the very top, but can't quite make it into the overcrowded B tier. Now, new to the tier list, but not a new build, is the Tragul Corpse Explosion Necromancer. This is the best that Tragul can do, and it's the starter set for Necros in Season 24. And that takes us to the B tier builds, which are up to 10 GRs behind the best builds. B as in best most of the season 24 starter sets can do. You're seeing a lot of Hadrix bags in here because no class has an exceptionally good starter set this season. However, we will call out Veer Chantoto, which is dropped to B tier because it can't work in any ethereal. It's using the two-piece Chantoto set. And since you are unlikely to have a useful ethereal early on in the season, this actually does make Veers a stronger starter set than most, because it's not dependent on an Ethereal. Now, also dropping from A tier is the Invoker Thorns Crusader, because the Ethereal it uses, Kalim's Will, is barely a buff. Thorns doesn't benefit from crit chance, or raw damage, or most of the buffs that Ethereals give. So we use Kalim's Will for its attack speed and life per hit. However, we have great news for Barbarians. All three Hammer of the Ancients builds, LOD, Raycor, Immortal King, can benefit tremendously from a Grandfather Ethereal and get bumped up into B tier. The Grandfather has huge damage on it, it has high attack speed, especially for a two-hander, and all of this really complements Hoda. IK is also the starter set for Barbs for the season, we have a build guide video for it right here. Now for Crusader, Roland Sweep and the LOD Blessed Shield build both work in Astrian's Iron Ward. And the Blessed Hammer Crusader works in a Redeemer. And these Ethereals allow these builds to keep pace with the average power increase, but not much more than that, so they stay in B tier. For the Witch Doctor, the LOD Spirit Barrage build was just scraping the bottom of B tier last season, and the inclusion of Ariok's Needle, it's a nice power buff, but it doesn't quite allow it to escape into A tier. However, the Helltooth Zombie Bears build, incorporating the Gidbin, and the Jade Harvester build, incorporating the Ghost Flame, managed to climb out of C tier and into B. And then Arakir Firebats benefits tremendously from the Ghost Flame, allowing it to reach a critical attack speed breakpoint, so it also rises into B. Now for Monk, Ulianas is the starter set. We have a build video on Ulianas over here. Ulianas benefits from Bartux for an average power rise. And you might notice that we had it in C tier in Season 23, but that's because we actually underestimated Inna's power, and have been for a while. It was the introduction of solo leaderboards in Season 23 that encouraged people to really push Uliana to its limit. And it's proved to be a bit stronger than we thought. So basically, it deserved to be in B tier last season, and so it's staying in B tier this season as well. For the Demon Hunter, the Legacy of Dreams Rapid Fire Demon Hunter gets strongly buffed by the Barisa Ethereal, allowing it to rise from the bottom to the top of B tier, but not quite escape into A tier. The Unhallowed Essence Hungering Arrow build, however, uses the Barisa to climb to B tier, and the Unhallowed Essence Multi-Shot build uses the Wind Force, which is effectively just a turbocharged Yang's Recurve, to also blast up into B tier. Now, new to the tier list, we have the N6 GOD4 Demon Hunter, which leverages the Natalia starter set of Season 24 and four pieces of the G.O.D. set with the speedy Doomslinger Ethereal for some fast farming gameplay. Uh, this build is also a strong season starter, and it's probably the best way to make use of your Natalias for farming. For Necromancers, the Legacy of Dreams Death Nova build uses Black Bogs Sharp to rise to B tier, but for the two Inarius builds and the Rothma build, Black Bogs just isn't enough to push it all the way out of B tier. Similarly for Wizards, the introduction of the Wizard Spike Ethereal to the Typhon Hydra and DMO Frozen Orb builds are enough just to keep up with the power inflation, but not enough to rise a tier. And that takes us to the A tier. A as in... Average. No, they are really strong and above average builds, but I get it. I know how everyone reads these tier lists. If you ain't first, you're last, Ricky Bobby. A tier builds are only about 5 GRs behind the best builds in the game on average, so they still are worth running. And here we see one of the biggest rises on the tier list, the Sunwuka Wave of Light Monk, 
which jumps two whole tiers due to a combination of adding an ethereal item, either a Jade Talon or a Shadow Killer, and a buff to the Crudest Boots that adds a big damage multiplier on this build's power. For our two Tempest Rush Monk builds, the LD version works in Bartux, and the Sun Wuko version works in the Jade Talon to keep up with power inflation. Then the Demon Hunter Natalia Rapid Fire build rises from B to A tier thanks to the powerful Barisa, but this remains a very difficult build to gear and play with steep Paragon requirements for it to excel. Now for the Barbarian, the two Might of the Earth builds rise from B to A tier thanks to the powerful Grandfather, as does the Frenzy Barb. And you'll note that we already had the Frenzy Barb in the A tier at the start of last season. We demoted it down to B tier after last season's tier list video because we realized we overestimated the Frenzy Barb's ability to keep his follower alive uh, with shouts and thus benefit from the token that gives access to all follower skills. Then the Akamba Barma Crusader just can't work an ethereal into its build. It's got the two-piece Norvald set, very strong, can't replace it, so it drops down to A tier. And then all four of our wizard builds here pop on a wizard spike, which is an average power increase that keeps most of them in A tier, but allows the DMO Twister Wizard to rise from the top of B tier into A tier. Now for Necromancer, the Masquerade Bone Spear build was hit with a heavy nerf, and even despite being able to work in Black Bog's Sharp, it still drops from S tier into A tier. And then the Witch Doctor's LON Poison Dart build pops on a powerful Gidbin to climb to A tier. And that takes us into S tier. S as in sweet mother of mercy, that's a lot of amazing builds. S tier builds are the best of the season, and we're seeing a lot of movement up into S tier this season thanks to Ethereals, which our previous S tier builds either don't benefit from at all or only benefit up to an average amount at most. Now we have 13 builds in the S tier and we still have our top 10 list to get to, so let's first cover the three honorable mentions. These are the three that don't make our top 10. So first off we have the Necromancer's LOD Poison Scythe build. Thanks to the power of Black Bog's Sharp, this build that was already close to S tier manages to climb up into the S tier. However, it won't make our top 10 list because even though it is one of the most powerful necro builds you can run and is the best necromancer build for killing trash monsters in group play, it does require mastering the positioning of your simulacrums to maximize their damage and is thus very challenging to play, much, much more so than the other necromancer build in our top 10 list. Next, we have the LON Bombardment Crusader, which is a Thorns build that rises from the top of A tier and into S tier, thanks to the Redeemer Ethereal. Lawn Bomb is normally just a weaker version of a Con Bombardment, but Season 24 sees those two swap positions. And we got build guide videos for both of these builds. But it's not making our top 10 list because Lawn Bomb is hard to gear, relying on that Ethereal to make it into S tier, whereas the other Crusader build in our tier list here would still be S tier even without ethereals. And our last honorable mention, we have the LOD Twister Wizard, which uses the Wizard Spike to stay in S tier. It's still an incredibly powerful wizard build, but its complex mechanics require just exceptional gameplay for it to perform to its max capacity. It's not a beginner friendly build, and the other wizard build in our top 10 is so much easier to play. And that leads us into our top 10. So, coming in at number 10, we have the Mundanugu Spirit Barrage Witch Doctor. Mundanugu's was flying high a couple seasons ago before receiving a nerf that kicked it out of S tier. Now, thanks to the power of Ariox Needle and its 200% damage bonus plus crit chance and crit damage and high flat damage, Mundanugu rises back into S tier and makes our top 10 list. But things are continuing to look up for Witch Doctors because coming in at number 9, we have the Zunimasa Poison Dart build. Like with Ariox Needle, the Gidbin gives this build a 200% damage multiplier, as well as crit chance and crit damage. But it also gives attack speed, which this build gets to double dip on, thanks to pet damage scaling with attack speed and having our pets attack when we do. So we're going faster, so we're attacking more often, and our pet's flat damage is buffed by our attack speed. So there's the two for there. That said now, between Mundanugu and Zunis, Zuni will likely push a little higher on the leaderboards, but it's incredibly squishy. And most players, the average player, will perform better with Mundanugus. And that takes us to number eight, the Patterns of Justice Tempest Rush Monk which rises into S tier, not just because of the power of the Jade Talon Ethereal, but also because we can fit a second two-hander into this build, the Flying Dragon Power, 
which can roll on the ethereal to double our attack speed. But this is far from the best monk build in our top 10 list. So moving on to number 7 we have the Whirlwind Barbarian. Wielding the powerful Grandfather Ethereal grants us 200% increased damage to Barbarian skills and a high amount of base damage, letting us spin to win into the S tier with what has been the King of Barbarian builds for years. That takes us to number 6, blasting its way up two whole tiers into the S tier thanks to the power of the Bariza. We got the Demon Hunter's own spin to win build, the G.O.D. Hungering Arrow Demon Hunter. The Bariza is such a strong ethereal that it's recommended to take this over any other weapon for the G.O.D. build, regardless of what rolls on it because its high base damage is just too powerful to pass up. Now onto number 5, the shiny new build of Season 24, the set that got the big revamp, the Mystic Ally in a monk. The inner set went from having no real identity of its own, serving as the jack of all trades of monk sets that can run most builds just worse, but now in is solidly a strongly themed build that lets you command an army of mystic allies. With this rework, Inna went from mediocre to one of the strongest builds in the game, and almost the strongest monk build in the game. That takes us to number 4, the strongest necromancer build in the game, the Legacy of Dreams Corpse Explosion Necro. By working in Black Bog's Sharp, we gain more poison damage, we gain a 100% damage buff to skills, and a stacking damage buff perfect for greater rift pushing, and a high attack speed that allows us to hit an important attack speed breakpoint for this build. We got a guide video over here. On to number 3, the best crusader build in the game, the king that cannot be killed no matter how many times Blizzard has attempted regicide on him with the nerf bat season after season after season, the Aegis of Valor Heaven's Fury Crusader. Now for season 23 this was the number one build, so he has been taken down a notch, partly because of the nerfs, partly because there's no two-handed ethereal to use, so we're instead using the one-handed redeemer, so we're losing out on a good amount of base damage there. Um, so this results in less of a buff than other builds get, but nonetheless he deserves his spot here in the top three. And that takes us to number two, the best wizard build in the game, the Firebird Mirror Image build. One of the stars of Season 23, this build is further enhanced by the Wizard Spike and its stacking damage affix. Since last season, Blizzard has also made a quality of life improvement to the build by giving us a buff icon to display the number of active mirror images we have. And lastly, our number one build, the most powerful build of Season 24, which was incidentally buffed while buffing the Inna Monk on the test server, the Legacy of Dreams Wave of Light Monk. Summer salting up two tiers. This build benefits from the new damage multiplier on the Crudest Boots and on the Rabbit Strike, while also working in the Jade Talon Ethereal, whose spirit gain on crit really helps us spam those bells. And now, as we wrap up this video, we'll remind you that you can find this tier list on maxwell.gg for easy reference, as well as all the written guides and resources you can possibly need for Diablo 3. I've also got a bunch of build videos on about a dozen or so of the builds we covered in this tier list, a lot of the top builds, and we've got a fast leveling guide, a video on the fastest way to farm the ethereal transmogs, and more. And as a quick heads up, we're doing our annual Patreon banner drive. If you want to get your name on the 2021 version of that banner, all you have to do is be a Patreon supporter at even just the $1 level by the end of August. That's August 31st. So thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.